This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them. Jim, welcome to AMN Drive Time. We are thrilled to have you on the show. I've had the privilege, Jim, of knowing you for a lot of years. And I know you've built up one heck of a business. Welcome to AMN Drive Time. Well, thank you, Bill. And uh, thank you for building your great business you talked about. But I couldn't have done it without Live Cox Marketing. I'm going to tell you that. Well, you're, ni- you're, you're nice to say so. You're nice to say so. So, Jim, you've been at it a while. How did you get started? Well, you know, Bill, it was a long, long time ago, but the good Lord blessed me with drive, ambition, passion, and a lot of energy. So when I started off at like 11, 12 years old, I, like I said, I've been blessed with ambition, drive, desire, passion, and uh, I wanted a lot more out of life. So I started working jobs, blowing lawns and, and washing windows and sweeping and, and uh, uh, paper routes. And, and at uh, 15 years old, I paid cash for my own first car. I took my dad down there to see it. It was lowered in front, the grill was out. You know, it was, one, it was already hot rotted. And I could hear the engine run, but I couldn't drive it. My dad says, you're gonna buy a car that you can't drive. Well, it's, it's just a clutch, dad, I can fix that. So I towed, paid $225 for it, towed it home. Pulled the clutch out in my driveway after the transmission, replaced the clutch, did it three times because obviously I didn't know you had to have a pilot shaft to line up the, the clutch disc or the whatever. So I fell in love with automobiles at a very, very young age. And then I started working on my buddy's car in the garage. Uh, another one of my buddies got me a job at a 76 gas station in uh, Stanton. Uh, so I was going to high school. I was working part time at that gas station. And at 18 years old, when I graduated, six months after I graduated, I bought that Union 76 service station. And uh, now, the, the, the short story is, Union 76 to me said, Jim Franco, we can't let you be a dealer. You're only 18 years old. You got to be 21 years old and you got to have some financial backing. And I said, yeah, but I've watched two dealers go broke and I'll increase the, the gallons by doing this. I'll increase the back room by doing this. And I stood there, the guy was six foot seven, right? And I'm talking to him, tell him all about how I'm going to make this, this service station the best. So he says, sorry, Jim. And he left. The next day he called me up and says, you know what? I talked to my boss and your enthusiasm and your drive. If you can get your dad to co-sign, we're going to let you have this 76 gas station. So that's kind of how I got started in business at uh, 18 years old, just out of high school. And uh, like my bio said, five years there, and then I, I, w- I was pumping gas one night. It was raining, and my buddies go driving by to Hollywood waving to me. And then they come back at midnight when I've closed this thing down and counting my money. They stop in and say, hey, we had a great time in the whole nine yards. I said, you know what, Jim Franco? I got to get out of this business. What's the next business? Oh, those guys in the auto parts, they make a lot of money. So I did my homework and got a hold of Big A Technologies, right? In 1965, I became the first Big A jobber in Southern California and uh, had that place for 22 years. Me and a buddy started Greenfield and big machine shop. I was doing 150 engines, and 400 heads. I had a service center on the side with four mechanics, uh, three auto parts stores for 22 years. And like I said, I love that. And that's kind of how I got into the computer business. Because in 1973, Triad comes along and says, we have this fantastic computer system. And by the way, one of the questions is, uh, what technology do you see come around? Well. I've been around long enough to see when uh, I saw the fax machine come in, I saw the calculator come in, color television come in. (laughs) But anyhow, 1973, this computer system cost me more than my first home, believe it or not. I just had a lot of fun adopting that computer system. Oh, by the way, that first computer system did no accounts receivable, did no uh, automatic purchase orders, and no point of sale. 
It was a posting machine. She took the invoices, gave the girl in the back a computer operator, and she had to post it all in there, and it would total up my day sales. That was it. And I paid more for that monthly than at 56000 My new home was only 34000 back in 1973. So that's kind of how it, somebody says, how did you get out of the parts business in the computer business? That's how. And so I ran them both for about a year after I bought Autolog in 1985. And that, how that happened was uh, I was asked to fly back east, safeguard scientifics, saying we're going to build a computer system for the auto parts business. And we noticed you have a, a triad system. Would you like to be on a panel? And I said, so, heck yes. So they flew me back there, and I was actually in the ground floor designing the original Autolog computer system. And I became a distributor for them in uh, uh, 81, bought the company in 85. So, anyhow. Sorry, I went on and on, but that's kind of how I got started in this business. I guess uh, I know I've heard it pieces, parts, but never straight away like that. That is one heck of a story. So clearly your dad co-signed at that 76 uh, filling station deal, right? Correct. And I go one step further. Now, my mom was all against it. My, the kids at Bobby's always getting in trouble in school and, you know, that kind of stuff. But my dad had faith in me. And then five years later, when I'm going to the auto parts store, I had to have a uh, big ace and I need twenty thousand dollars, and they're going to finance the the, uh, the inventory. So consequently, my grandfather died and left my mom uh, some money, and I talked her into loaning me that money, and I <laughs> I paid her back over thirty three years. So yes, I've got to, I, I really got to tell you, my dad was my hero in my life. And my parents went and they had no money. They were very, you know, um, regular, ordinary people with no money and uh, uh, backed me 100%. That's kind of how I got started. Did you already learn customer service, Bill? Nope. In my service station washing windshields. One lady told me one day, she said, the reason I come here because nobody has ever washed my windshield like you do. Bink, the light bulb came on. And by the way, when I got that service station, I was opening at 6 o'clock in the morning and ran until 12 o'clock at night by myself. I did that for three months because I want to make sure that I can make money and pay the bills. Then I hired my first employee. Now, and I didn't know anything about hiring people, so I just needed help. Legitimately needed help. So the way I looked at it, I wanted to take that person and show him everything I knew so I could then do more stuff and we could do it together. So I never hired employees like they were my, I was their boss and they were supposed to do what I told them. I made them more of a friend and a buddy and a partner to teach them and motivate them. Uh, and that stuck with me now with my 92 employees I have today because my tenure is 14.7 years, but who's counting? <laughs> so I learned customer service. I learned how to handle team members. And Bill, I learned marketing. Not in my service station, I learned marketing auto parts store. I said, how do these guys get the people in their stores? And I started watching carefully and they talked about things like lost leaders. So I had my windows painted and I put flags outside. I was selling spark plugs for less than they're costing me. And 22 years, I built a heck of a business in the auto parts store. All blood and guts. <laughs> you know, Jim, my first job was working at a gasoline station as well. And I used to, really, I did, I pumped gas. And I, and I did the windshields and I sold windshield wiper fluid. My first summer job, I don't know, I was 17 or 16 years. I was old enough to drive, 16 or 17. And I, and I up on North Hill in Akron, Ohio, it's called Holland Gas Station. A local guy had about 20 gas stations. He was a friend of my dad's and I worked there all summer. And that was a great clean the lavatories, right? And so yep. cigarettes, Jim, we would sell. Uh, 25 cents. 20 cartons a day, single pack by single pack. I had a Union 76, and we did a lot of fun stuff. We wore shorts, and we had bow ties, wow. and we ran out the cars, and uh, we didn't only wash the windows. We washed the windows all the way around. We checked under the hood, 
out of the water, oil, and the battery. Uh, at one time, we even had vacuum machines on the island to vacuum the customers' cars out. I did all kinds of fun stuff to get to, to stir the pot, even when I had my service station back when. That's fantastic. You're still doing it. Still doing it. Still doing it. Still, stir, still stirring that pot. So, Jim, uh, your dad was a big influence. Any other big influences in your life? I'm going to name a few. And, uh, Bill, you're one of them, believe it or not. Uh, I'll give you Paul Sandoval, got me my first business loan. And he actually uh, reaffirmed how important it was to have a relationship with the Lord above, which was fantastic. I needed that when I was younger. Um, and my father, obviously, he worked with me for, for over 30 years, side by side. He was never the... He, he was never in this business. He was Dixie Cup Company. He was in the printing department, printing cups. Um, but one day he came to me and he says, Y.O., he called me Y.O., that's uh, Italian for boy. He says, Y.O., they got these youngsters coming. I've been there for 34 years, and they bring these youngsters in, and they've taken my position away. They put me on the night shift, they, and I'm not a supervisor anymore. Uh, I said, Dad. How many years before you retire? He says, I got seven more years. I said, why don't you go ask them how much they're going to pay you to retire today versus seven years from now. Came back and it was, believe it or not, $575 difference way, way back then. And I said, Dad, tell them you'll quit. Come work with me. I'll cover you. So we, he worked with me in my auto parts store. He helped me with my, well, you've been inside my computer company. And I told you the story before. All these dividers, the restrooms. My dad, myself, and my uh, ex-brother-in-law uh, built the interior in Autolog in 1986. And you helped me a great deal, believe it or not. Because when you sold your company many, many years ago and took it back, that was a big lesson for me. Because right now, obviously, I'm getting called just like you are two, three times a week wanting private equity companies to... Uh, uh, quote, quote, invest in me. <laughs> Sorry. I've got family in the business. I'm never going to sell my company. I'm never going to retire. And I'm nurturing my my family. Donnie, my, both my daughters are running this company. Unbelievable. Uh, the last few years, give me an opportunity to slow down just a little bit. Not much, no, not much. COVID came along. All my employees went home, and I came in every single day like nothing. You know, I'm old school, baby. I, I got I got to be here uh, at the helm, having fun, stirring the pot. Yeah, I don't think you've slowed down. I don't think you've slowed down too much, Jim. Not that I've witnessed. <laughs> so, Jim, tell me. You've probably made a mistake or two along the way. Any any jump out yet? Yeah. You, like maybe special learning experiences? You know, one of the one of the questions you asked for me, if you, in theory, had it all to do over again, what would you change type yeah. thing? You know, I got to be honest. I could, I, you and I could talk for two days on all the things that I could have done through my career in the last six years. But let me tell you something. I couldn't change the thing because I changed anything. I wouldn't be here. You know what, I mean? what I'm saying? Yeah, I could not change one thing or I wouldn't be here. But I want to tell you something that I this is this is heartfelt. But one of the things I did wrong is I raised too much hell in school and didn't pay attention. And so I this I and when I graduated, I, I still don't have my high school diploma um, because I was a bad boy. But what what happened to me is my reading, writing. Uh, skills were a little bit weak, so I had to have people in my when I was in business and when I was young, had people write for me, read for me, and spell for me. So that's one thing that I would do over differently. I would have paid attention to school and did a little more schooling, just because. But I'm a I'm a force to be reckoned with, and and I'm a, I'm on fire, and I just uh, somebody called me a bull in the china shop, and I never don't take no for an answer, and I push through, but yeah, I don't, uh, I, I, I thank the Lord on a daily basis for what a phenomenal life I did lead. Now I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a whole bunch of stuff. If I had to overdo again, I think I would do differently, but 
I got to be careful because I got to be here because I've never, I never realized that I could be this confident, this secure, this peaceful, this successful and loving life this much. It's amazing. And why does it take 60 years to get here? I have no idea, but it sure, it, it, it's, it's been fun. But I, but you know what? I've had fun all the way along, <laughs> even though I would leverage to the hill or more money than I could possibly do. Redline most of my life with uh, overextending myself. But you know what? If you don't uh, put it on the line, you don't get you don't get the results back. You know, Jim. They say it's always about the process, not the end. The not the end result, right? And you've always struck struck me as a guy who has just embraced the process. On my notes, I have one phrase that I use all the time, and I tell the people: enjoy the process. Yep. Because the Lord only gave me enough manna for one day. Yeah. And so this day, kick butt and take names. Don't worry too much about how you screwed up yesterday or the day before. And don't get too far in front because you might get a little frustrated with all the stuff that would have, could have happened next in the future. So pay attention to this day and live it hard. Yeah, I think, Jan, my, what I've witnessed from you, you do that quite well. So tell me, <laughs> any lessons learned for you personally? or for your business coming out of the pandemic? Well, let me tell you that pandemic thing, and I'll be very, very honest. And I don't, I have no fear, obviously, because I've been doing this for a long time and I just don't have any fear in business or decisions or whatever. Uh, but that little pandemic, when I saw him shut down this world, I kind of scared the shit out of me. And what's, what, what concerned me mostly was I worked my ass off to build this beautiful company. And now it's going to go to shit in the handbag because I couldn't see the future. I just looked at, wait a minute, you can't shut every business down. We're not going to, no. <laughs> Anyhow, so that was my first reaction. The second reaction, I think you're going to love the fact that uh, I sent all my employees home, obviously. I'm a technology company, so. We could do everything except a little bit of uh, uh, three technicians at three of my facilities we kept open and running. But right now, this very day, Bill, I got to uh, be honest with you, I'm putting together a, an employee questionnaire. And the questionnaire is about it saying, now we've been at home, at home offices now for over a year. And the questionnaire is about what their experiences are, what they've gained what's bad, what's good and different, et cetera. And next month I'm having my uh, semi-annual state of the Autolog team meeting. And we're going to talk about all the answers and, and how people are doing and whatever we can do as a company to make that even better. Because between you and me, Bill, I'm never going to ask my people to come back. We're highly, highly productive. We had a phenomenal 2020 because of some of the stuff we did. We went overboard with service to our customers, reached out to make sure we had them covered, and didn't lose a, a lick. Only because I've got more, uh, um, how to say it in a positive way, I have a, I have a more experienced crew, a more uh, higher value crew, a higher paid crew. And they've been with me for a long, long time. And even my acquisition I did, I picked up some a phenomenal talent along the way. And when you have talent like that, I'm going to do my very best to preserve that because number one, I do have an attitude to hire for life. Number two, you don't ever have to retire from my company. Work as many hours you want, as long as you can. Keep in the game. Keep young. Keep smart. Keep honing your skills. What? So, um, yeah, with that in mind, I'm, uh, I'm going to keep my employees around for a long, long time and do whatever I can to help them do that. That's awesome. So Jim, tell me, um, Autolog is you, you, you gave a, a great summary of kind of up to buying Autolog. You know, just talk about the last, I don't know, 20, 25 years and, and Autolog and the success you guys have achieved and all the things you've accomplished. Well, you know what? I was I, I was buzzing along for, for, for years and years, and I just couldn't move the needle. I'm working my butt off. I'm I'm selling the computers. I'm installing the computers. I got well, when I bought the company, I had six employees. Okay, 1985, I had six employees. 
Now I got 92. But the, 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 what I'm coming around the corner to is one person said one time, well, there's a way to grow your business through acquisitions. And I go, hmm, let me try that. So my first acquisition was when I bought Southeast, which was uh, supporting Series 12, tried Series 12 system. But I've done 17 acquisitions, Bill. And the way I did that, I did it with no money. <clears throat> uh, I would I would find people that would take a small down payment, you know, uh, and then I would pay them over a five to seven year period of time to buy their businesses. And the common denominator I found, Bill, as I went, then I started buying a few and I go, whoa, this is good. I'm moving the needle. I'm getting talent. I'm getting new customers in automotive. I'm getting talent employees and I pick up a product with a recurring revenue. Okay, this will work. So as I'm going shopping, I'm finding out the ones that were most vulnerable are the ones that, guess what they didn't do, Bill? They didn't market. They didn't advertise. So consequently, over a period of time, they're going the wrong direction. And the guy like me comes along and says, oh, please, here. And they hand it to me. So I've taken those, wrapped my arms around them with my e-products and uh, different attitude of culture and excellent. By the way, I had byproducts. You love this little story. Three days ago, I had one of my ex-customers call me from Canada. Says, Jim, I'm Bruce. Remember, I had Parts Unlimited down on Hyle in uh, Huntington Beach. He had an auto lock. Uh, the shopping center doubled his uh, rent, so we had a, he sold out, got a divorce, been out of the business for over 15 years. <laughs> Called me on the phone, looking at a computer system up there, and he said to me, he said, Jim Franco, you know how comes you're so successful today? Because your customer service was off the scale. Unbelievable. You had the best customers. You answered that phone. You took care of me, kept me running. And I said, Bruce, I'm still doing the same thing today. The whole world is moving to the internet. No. You call my company. We answer the phone in the second ring. You send me a text and you're going to get it back within 10 to 15 minutes. We have excellent customer service. And that's what separates the men from the boys. It costs a lot more money. I have a lot more employees than I need but I've got a customer base that people would die for. I have employees that will go to the ends of the earth for the company and a very profitable technology company because of customer service. Right, Bill? Everybody's, you heard, heard the expression, it's not the steak, it's the sizzle. And when I was pumping gas back in the, back in the my service date days, I looked around and I go, Everybody's got the same gas I do, and everybody's got the same price I do. What's going to differentiate me? Well, it was all the stuff we did and all related to making that customer feel like they were really important. And that works. It's all about how you wash that windshield, right, Jim? Absolutely. All the way you wash that windshield and how you smiled at that customer and told them how great they are. Absolutely. So, Jim, tell me uh... – what are you thinking about the show coming up? Are you guys going to be there? Or what are your plans? Are you kidding me? <laughs> we put a brand new booth together and then boom, Apex is called up the next year. So no, we're going to be there in colors. I think I had uh, 25 or 30 people there with a nice big 20 by 30. No, we'll be at Apex in full color. No question. Probably a silly question because I don't think you got it. <laughs> Do you have balance in your life? <laughs> I have. You know what? I, I read that question and I said, you know what? I really have a good balance, very good balance. Because I've learned, and I and you also in here asked me, how do I profess that or show my employees that, my team members that? Yeah. On every meeting, I swear I do this. I said, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. You've got to get good rest. You've got to have a proper diet. You've got to have exercise. And I will do my very best to challenge you and keep you interested in a great company to work for because you got to work too. 
If you don't work, you don't feel the pleasure. So that's the kind of balance I profess. And yes, I say, please don't be a workaholic. You got to enjoy your life. And when you're, and when you're working, don't make it work, make it fun. Have a balance. And yes, I do have a very good balance. I have to, to be this young and be this on fire. I've, I had to love what I do, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, Jim, you got a lot of passion, right? You got to have a lot of passion to be successful. And you clearly got a lot of passion. Tell me, uh, your legacy, it's a long, that's kind of a big question. Is Do you, you think about it? Do you have any thoughts about it? Absolutely, 100%. 100%. And I want to be a guy that everybody says, that was one of the most generous, thoughtful guys that really made a difference in a lot of people's lives. That's what I want my legacy to be. So, Jim, just a couple of kind of industry questions. Do you have any thoughts about electric vehicles? Well, they're, uh, uh, yeah, it's coming. Uh, I own one. I own a Tesla. Um, I'm not, what I've told everybody is listen to me. Electric cars is exactly the same. The only difference in electric cars versus a combustion engine car is one's got a battery, one's got an engine. But all the rest of the pieces, they're still going to crash them for the body work. They're still going to have tires and brakes and windshield wipers and stuff. No, I understand we're going to move forward through <laughs> uh, evolution, but I'm not concerned at all about the electric vehicle disrupting this aftermarket business. Very little, in my opinion. But I've watched it grow for 60 years, and all it does is grow. We find niches. We do, and we're better than the dealers because we have this passion and drive, and we get the parts anyhow. I don't have to sell this industry. It's a $300 billion industry, and I'm tickled pink to be right in the middle of it. Talk to me, e-commerce. Any thoughts on that? Uh, e-commerce is exploding. Uh, that's one of the one of the biggest that happened in the, in the uh, coronavirus. Uh, double and quadruple all of our transactions and the need for online. And uh, uh, yes, huge. Online ordering. Uh, delivered, uh, a lot of my customers started delivering to homes. They got delivery trucks anyhow. So we encourage all of that with uh, with our e-commerce products. And we keep, that's going to be the future. I mean, everything is running off the cloud. And uh, we're in it with both feet. So e-commerce, you can't, uh, it's a shame that this industry, and I love this industry, you know, to death. But what bothers me about it is they're so naive and so reluctant to take the time and energy to learn, adopt, and embrace technology. Because it's the future, you can't, you can't ignore it. It just speeds everything up. It gives you instant, instant everything. <laughs> uh, so we do our very, very best to make it as easy as possible. We train, we babysit, we do everything we can to help people get into the 21st century with technology through e-commerce, yes. <laughs> to me about brands, Jim, you've got your own brand, of course, a lot of brands in the marketplace. Do you have feelings about branding and positioning and all that? I never realized how important and how valuable your brand, because your brand, a lot of people think a brand is just your logo, but it's not your logo. It's your company, it's your culture, it's your reputation, it's what you stand for. And you have to continually get those messages out there to let people know who you are, what you are, and what, who you are, where you are, what you have to offer. I mean, it's very, very important. When you're in business, even though you need to make money, that's important. But your priorities got to be, the customer's got to be number one. Your employees got to be number two. The company's got to be number three. The owner's got to be number four, right? And if you tip that scale the other direction, that's most companies. The customer's on the bottom. <laughs> the employees are here. And the owners are on top making all the 
money and all the decisions and all the ego trips. So uh, I danced to a little different drummer on that. And I've learned it through what they call OJT, on-the-job training. Like I said earlier, I have no diploma, no high school diploma, but boy, the stuff that I've learned from my peers and from my customers and from my employees has just been invaluable. And I've utilized that in my business and in my life. And uh, how rewarding. How rewarding. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, Jim, you're, 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 you're the uh, American success story, right? I think so. I think so. There's very few people. I mean, there, we've heard the stories about the, the guys that come over, uh, 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 come to this country from another country with no money, and they become great big multi-billionaires. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm in a, in a small way. I'm one of those guys, uneducated, suburbia, and had an opportunity, grabbed it, and never looked back. And I'm still looking for more acquisitions, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm looking for more acquisitions, so give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Jim, that you'd like to share? You got It's just a great story. I really appreciate you taking the time to to visit with me and come on to AMN Drive Time and share your story. Is there anything else that that you'd like to share with the marketplace? You know, I just got to thank the entire aftermarket for uh, the opportunity and for all the, the people involved in this industry. It's amazing. I mean, your company, all the major enterprise customers I do business with, the vendors I do business with, and uh, you know, right now we got you know almost five thousand rooftops with my one of my systems running in here and there. So it's been a it's been a great ride, and I now my company has a large responsibility to keep all those systems running. And and my management, my youngsters, are looking forward to artificial intelligence and some of the other stuff we're going to be developing over the years to uh, continue taking technology, making it a very important part of the parts business. Definitely. So, yeah, I'm just appreciative of the opportunity and uh, being involved in this, in, in this business. Uh, <clears throat> and being uh, with other businesses, this industry has got a whole bunch of good old boys. Walk like they talk. Do what they say they're going to do. And that's kind of more important than, uh, uh, yeah. Because businesses, that's what we do. But, you know, we have to live. We have to have uh, relationships. And, and I think relationships are definitely the most important thing. Just a, I think that the aftermarket remains a relationship business. Absolutely. And I think not all industries, you know, there's a lot of pressures on a lot of companies, especially publicly held and otherwise. But this business in the aftermarket, a handshake is still a handshake in many cases, right? And and these Absolutely. relationships work both ways between vendors and customers, customers, vendors. And over a long time, it, it, uh, it's just been a great industry to be a part of. 100%. And, I, and the little things that I've done in, in our world, we have no long-term contracts. My customers walk on water as far as we're concerned, and whatever whatever it's going to take to help them be successful, we're going to do. So, And those relationships, also we have good relationships. They'll actually help us and guide us to develop what they need. Right. We're not on the front line like they are. Right. In fact, I love going out and sometimes, well, when I was doing installations, I'd end up on the counter uh, waiting on customers and, and – <laughs> <laughs> the owner said, Franco, would you like to have a job? I no, I'm I'm just here uh, showing you how to be all you can be. So <laughs> I, I I love this industry. And I would come on, I was behind the counter hustling parts for over twenty years. So, you know, I'm uh I'm a parts guy. Yeah. And I was also a mechanic in my auto parts store. And when I had a big machine shop, I mean I got my micrometers on, we can build some hellacious engines. So I've I've touched most all aspects of uh, of this aftermarket business. It's been uh, it's been a hell of a ride. 
Yep. What a ride. Well, Jim, what fantastic. It's great to visit and uh, chat with you on the video screen. Thank you, sir. This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them.